This podcast is based around the history and experiences of the infamous Shane Bugby, recollected and retold by Shane Bugby himself. Who is Shane? Well, you're about to find out. I'm your host, Nanarol, and this is Speak of the Devil. Shane Bugby. We're here to talk about the documentary Hail Satan that was released recently. I have not seen the movie personally, and I'm still on the fence of seeing it, but I know that Shane has seen it. Let's go ahead and give it a rating right away. How many upside down stars would you give it out of five? I would give it no stars. No stars. No stars. Uh, because I'm a, it's a, I'm a documentarian. And um, I, I, I don't, in, 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 in general, I don't like modern documentaries because they're basically propaganda pieces. They just grab a subject and go with that subject story rather than explore it. The filmmaker, you know, is like, a, she must have been hired by them. Um, and she acts like she wasn't, but it, it was like a, I mean, again, no one spoke to me and in general, when you make a documentary, you do interviews and you gather your information. So at the very least, a greedy documentarian would have called me or had their producer call me and do an interview and get a bunch of information from me so they know which way to navigate their their ship, their film. And they didn't even do that. So I was just blown away by the arrogance of their their lack of, of uh, due diligence as, as filmmakers or artists. Like, as a filmmaker, if I was going to make a propaganda piece for someone, I would definitely call all their enemies because there may be a podcast later where some of them come out and say, no one ever called me. Especially ones about religions or political groups or other organizations, there's a tendency to have like all sides or there's a tendency to try to find a bad side. Yeah, well, I say especially in art. If you're going to be an artist, a filmmaker, and not make like a, a commercial for a uh, automobile sales or whatever, I think you like you want to do a documentary. You don't know how long it's going to take. You have to, you have to follow the story, not pound the story to what you want in a certain time frame and budget. You know, you have to follow the story, and it's unfortunate they didn't because there's a decent story within the Satanic Temple's origin. I think because I'm a part of it. <laughs> Do you think that most people who watch the movie are unaware that you were part of it? Oh, absolutely. How could they even know? They would never even know. It's like just underground. People who are real Satanists or people who are really paying attention know I'm a part of it. I know when that came out, someone asked Staten LeVay, Anton LeVay's son, uh, grandson, about, about the Satanic Temple. And he goes, oh, fuck that group. It's something Shane Bugby created. <laughs> and that caused controversy. But... But, it, but he knows the he knows the origin. I did create it. I mean, Doug and me, you know, he was a uh, a part. He was a, we worked together creatively, so I'm not going to take all the credit. But it was something that we had come up with a long time ago. Uh, the idea of a lobbyist group for Satanists, which I never took as a serious thing, like a lobbyist group. I took it as a when I did the interview with Doug and on Vice Magazine. When I called it a yes men group. That's what we wanted to do, is just make it like a practical joke thing, just using the word Satan to, to mock people, to show hypocrisy. But we were, we, when we were talking together, we weren't originally looking to make it a religion that, that would guide a group of people. I see. You know, that's, guiding a group of people seems very anti-Satanic within the idea of, of a Satanist, I think. I've heard um, that there was hours of footage also done in other locations, perhaps other countries, that never surfaced. They just decided not to use it, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was some influence to that from TST. Oh, certainly. You can see their fingerprints were all over it. They were able to be, if they didn't want to be shown, they had uh, their, they were, their screen, you know, Pixelated, their faces were pixelated. Kevin's face was pixelated, and his partner, I forget his name, was pixelated in the film. 
but they but they used they used the original footage that we had shot in Florida when I was a part of all of this. They the Rick Scott right. They used Kevin's footage, so it's part it's the it's the film we were working on originally. Like that was the when when we started when Kevin got involved in this idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He wanted to make a film, a documentary, and he wanted to make one mocking Satanists. And I think he's done a good job. I think ultimately that's what I hear, see in Hell Satanists. They're mocking the ignorance of, of uh, followers or joiners or something like that, which is sort of neat. I just wish they weren't using it in a satanic perspective. You know, they, they I can see how you can make fun of followers as far as uh, human beings go. But it makes no sense to use the satanic philosophy to say, look at these people, they're our flock, they're our followers, they're our, or as Kevin called them originally, when uh, when, when we start, first started this was minions, he called the Satanist minions and had a cow load of them. And so uh, when I started, when I jumped in, I you know, we had to remove the cow logo and the word minion and followers, and I was like, that's not really satanic. It's degrading too. Right, right. But people are into that. People were into it. People, and that, and that's what I'm saying. It's not a satanic thing. It's a, it's a mockery of that. Mm. And and so when they, when they, when they have the seven satanic principles, that seven number is, is a Christian number. Yes, I think that that coziness though, because so many of those stories in the pre, in the trailer to uh, Hell Satan seem like they are. There, there's a lot of people who grew up with church or, you know, being Catholic and they went went to this because it was attractive to, like, write their bad experiences from when they were younger. And so maybe that familiarity brings to them. Right. It's just a trade-off. It's a trade-off and they want to yeah. identify with something cooler or hipper or, or the people involved are better looking. I want to be in that group. You know, all of those things, but all those things aside, the, for me, the scary part is it was a recruitment film. And that's really far away from Satanism, is to recruit people. Like LeVay would say, you're either born one or you're not one. And and to see the film end in a militant note, with a, a, a fake militant note, like, oh, we're under attack, they might shoot us, we're seven people, we're, we're, we're three deep, they'll never get to you, Doug. You know, I think of the great uh, Larry Flint, how he was shot from 100 yards away from a tower, you know, stuff like yeah. that. I mean, it, so it was like, not reasonable what they were talking about, that, but they were promoting it in this film as it was reasonable. Like, like there was a reasonable death threat upon only Doug because he's the only public Satanist. Where you and I would know many people who walk out of their house with a Baphomet shirt on every day. And that's a political act, an individual political act, and it can be quite dangerous depending on where you are. Um, so to pose it like that made me feel like they wanted to attract people who have psychological disorders or mental health concerns that they should be addressing, where they're, they're promoting the fear, fear. And that's the one way you can move people is, is fear or joy. Yes. And so they're really playing on that. And, and Doug being a neurologist, that was a, a Harvard educated neurologist. Neuroscientist? Neuro, yeah, a neuroscientist, there you go. Uh, that, that's a troubling thing that that was not in the film because he studied how to manipulate emotions, how to manipulate or how people are manipulated emotionally. And, 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 and so that's a, all that stuff I would have addressed in my documentary, <laughs> like those are important, yeah. those are important things, especially when you're 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 basically leading to hey we're a nonviolent group, and then ending the film with guns and violence. It just is layered in a way that to me, as I said, is a little a uh, little concerning as I see right wing groups take on a satanic look because it's easier to recruit yes. people into Satanism than it is white supremacy at this point. And I can't help but feel like sometimes he's treading a fine line, even if that's not his or Malcolm Jerry's uh, attempts. It it often is treading that line. Oh, oh, I think it is absolutely their attempt. It, they they're not, I don't think they're treading that line. I think how does the how does the Catholic Church have such power because they have a fanatic 
that within their their fringes. And so yes. they're, they're, they're looking for their, their fanatic fringe because you move people with fear, not only joy, but mm -hmm. fear. Po politicians are moved with fear. And much like the Catholic Church moves them with their fanatical abortion, they, they're able to move abortion rights because of the fanatics who go up and shoot abortion doctors. And so if you want to be a powerful lobbying group in a religious satanic community group, you want to have the fear wing. You want to have people that are willing to go out and shoot up places or stuff like that. And, and you're starting to see that in like New Zealand when that play, the mosque was shot up. That gentleman was wearing a black sun patch, which is a satanic, a satanic patch. It was not a white, it's not just a white supremacist patch. That's tied into Satanism. So you're starting to see satanic imagery pop up in these shootings. And then like the white, the alt-right has been definitely co-opting logos from every, from North culture, from satanic culture, from all kinds of like imagery because they know that they got to be clever about it. They can't just use a swastika. Right, right. And much like some people from Norse culture are doing now, they're regaining those, they're, they're retaking those things. And they're saying, no, this is not uh, an ethnic thing. This is, this is the belief. This is not, the hate wasn't involved in our stuff. And I think it's important for the Satanists. Why do I bother with this stuff? Well, I'm, I'm worried yes. about my good name, my evil name being drugged through the mud as some sort of hater. I'm not. And so I don't want to, right. I don't want to be on the left-hand path of people thinking, oh, you're a Satanist, you're a hater. Well, I could be, but uh, not in a way where I'm going to be a gun-toting lunatic. Don't be afraid of me um, for for what I wear, you know, uh, or, or who I am. I guess, I guess I shouldn't say don't be afraid of me, but don't be afraid of me for the wrong reasons, or homicidal reasons. I don't know. It's a... Yeah, it's 2019, not 1998. Yeah. What was in 1998? <laughs> Columbine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was in 98 or 99? I'm not sure, but exactly, exactly. We're moving into some, a different era. It's, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and so it's, it's just a scary thing to watch. But my point of coming out and, and trying to talk against the Satanic Temple with what I see going on there. I have an our article on my old website. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it calls them out on this before they ever did this. I have to. Oh, do you, was it the article you had written? So, uh, dear listener, I have the no. The way I found out about Shane Bugby was the Vice article that he interviewed Doug in, and then the unmasking Lucian Greaves, and then I saw another article before that that sort of called that stuff out. And I, like you, I do not remember what the title of it was, but I think this is also the same one that you had mentioned something about Doug saying about the CIA and yeah. MK Ultra. Right, hey, right, one. And so I do this, people might say, oh, you do this for attention or other things. Well, hardly, attention for me gets me run out of towns. I don't get to hide behind fake this is my real name and my real face so i was moving away from this stuff i make artwork i don't satanism isn't a tool for me anymore to be you it's not be, does not behoove me anymore than it already has i am a part of that history that cannot be taken from me i come out of that right. moment and i re-emerge in this to say hey this is an individual thing yo this isn't a political thing we can't be gathering Satanists as a lobbyist group, it makes no sense within the philosophy. And there's something wrong happening here. There's something that people should be skeptical and ask more questions. But that's, I think, the uh, at the least. And I don't see these people being skeptical. I think Doug has been able to push all of their fear buttons and their political buttons to join, to throw money at them. You know, which was, which was part of the plan when we were doing it to mock, mock the attention, mock the attention of people, and get them to quit watching TV, and you know, it was, it was about promoting uh, free thought or individuality, stuff like that. It wasn't about rewriting a philosophy that didn't need rewritten. You know, 
I don't see them adding much to it. I see them trying to rewrite it. Yes, or at least um, co-opting. I, I see a lot of co-opting ideas from others and the defensiveness of it has been astounding as well. I cannot believe the level of unprofessionalism within their PR on Twitter, for example, that sometimes these arguments show up and I don't know if it's actually Doug as Lucian Greaves or someone else being Lucian, but within that login, that persona is very defensive on Twitter and I don't think that's very professional at all. Um, I have not paid attention to their Twitter feed. I started it. I know I started it and taught Doug how to use Twitter and Kevin. And um, I also had the Church. <laughs> I, I also had the Church of Satan Twitter. So, and so it's so your long. fault. It's all your fault that he's on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, sorry, sorry, not sorry, as the kids say. Sorry, not not sorry. But um, you shouldn't be sorry. It's like watching a train wreck half the time. You can't bother, You can't stop looking. Oh, I love this piece of advice from the lady at the bank's granny. Never say you're sorry because you're not a sorry human being. You apologize. So I like that piece of advice. So I apologize. Nice. But um, I ha I'm blocked from all those accounts. They blocked me. So I, I take that as a oh, an award. I'm going to frame the I'm blocked by Ice T. I'm blocked by Roseanne. And I'm blocked by the Satanic Temple. Congratulations. Yes. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure about Doug and how he responds. I, I know I got a screen grab of a couple things he said about me and about the CIA stuff that I had said. And I'm not sure. Um, I got harassed on Twitter about that. Someone asked me, so is, is it true what you said about Doug and the CIA? Is it true? Is he a member? As I said there, I would say here, it would not matter if he's a member. Civil servants are cool. Cops are cool, can be. Firemen are cool. And so I don't mind a civil servant. It's the corrupt civil servants I mind. So the question isn't, is he a member of the CIA? But what is he doing for the CIA? And is it, uh, is it in a corrupt department of the CIA? It would make me question um, if that was indeed true about Doug. Uh, what what's his job? What is he trying to look for? Like, is he trying to round up all the bad apples by acting like a bad apple, or putting things that are possibly attractive to the bad apples? Maybe that. Probably well, cer not. But cer certainly building like a Taliban or something like that. And I know that's a shocking word for people, right? If you can grab a group of power, powerful people, if you can get the juggalos, which the FBI or CIA labeled as a gang, if you can get gang members to join a gang that is controlled by the bigger gang, which is the CIA, you've probably done really good work and you're going to be, oh, shit. you know, paid and move up on the, on the ladder there. Um, I don't know. Kind of like the Iran Contras and the crack in LA. Yes. Exchanging the guns for drugs. Yes, stuff like that. So I see it. I see. Holy shit! I never thought of that. Right. So I see things, like, and I don't. I don't mean to sound like a paranoid, but I think you have to be skeptical and and think about these things at least and look at them. And when I present them, people are like you're crazy. You're crazy. Well, I'm only called crazy because of the class of person I come from. If I was an actual Harvard grad, I'd be called something else. It's amazing how I'm called crazy just because I say, well, I think you should be skeptical of this and think about what I'm saying. Yes, and the fact that you are being skeptical makes you just automatically more satanic in that sense because you're asking questions. It's not the matter of if you agree about it or not. You fucking thought about it. If someone thought about it and it was still the group for them, then power to them, that was their choice. But the fact that people are like, oh, sign me up, and then they just sign up, and then they're in a fucking movie about it where they share their fucking Match.com story, it's it's amazing to me how quickly they agreed to this. It's 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 uh, calling me crazy is a way to make a, what I say not legitimate for people anymore. Like, oh, he's not legitimate. What he's saying, actually, I'm the most legitimate player in the game. As far as just say, I'm paying attention and I happen to see things behind the curtain that other people would not see or haven't seen. And I still see those things. So when I say what I say about the Taliban or a terrorist group being formed, 
I'm actually seeing things that I'm not comfortable repeating on the air at this moment. But I'm seeing things that are starting to gel that make me very uncomfortable and also uh, make me a little worried and uh, fearful, I would say, almost. Um, and so I would say people should look at that stuff with a keen skeptical eye and think about all of the possibilities and ask questions and then ask more questions. And when your questions start to get you ostracized from mm -hmm. a group, you know you're doing something right. Yes. You're doing something right in your life. And man. isn't that like in the Bible too about, you know, the fall of Lucifer? I do you know what? I sound like like a fucking idiot right now, but you know, let's use the meme, let's use the meme uh, that's online of like Lucifer being cast down by God is like God showing this diagram of like his new, you know, his new model of species he's going to have. And then one of the angels sitting at the uh, boardroom table says, dinosaurs were cooler. And so then he gets thrown from heaven. Oh, right, right, right. And you're doing the same thing. And here are these people who, you know, think they are the evilest things in the world and, you know, are the Sataniest Satans ever are calling you crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I... I gotta step back a second. I don't. I don't think you could sound like an idiot. I, I really, you know, very intelligent person. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that you're so hard on yourself, though. It's amazing. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> that, that may be a. If I question myself, then I can question other. Yes, people. you have to be skeptic with yourself before you can be skeptic with other people. You have. To, I think that might be a quality of the great Satanists, the one percenters, is that they are hard on themselves. When they make mistakes, they are hard on themselves. You know, that's a... If you don't criticize yourself, you'll never... Improve. Right, you, that's a one percenter quality probably, just like... Because I feel the same way. I'm like, I'm an idiot. This isn't good enough. <laughs> but I think the great, the great one percenters are fucking hard on themselves and others. And they have few friends, but great friends at that, that can be hard on them too. Hard on each other. Like I've said many times, I think the essence of what, one of the many layers of Satanism, but the, one of the, I think the main one is that Satanists are creators, they're artists, they're inventors, they're engineers. Uh, and so I think to be that, we are hard on ourselves and our friends who are artists, inventors, creators, engineers, composers. When they ask us a question, how does that sound? We're gonna go, eh, could be better. I've heard you do better. I've heard you do better. And then the other person That's said, the nicest thing you can do to your friends, too. Yes, yes. Just be honest with yes. them. Oops, I clapped and everything went down. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'll clap back. Yay. Um, so before we jump real quick into some of the most like notable, infamous, terrible things that you saw in this film, I, I do have a question for you. Go. So... If this is a recruiting film, and this might possibly sway people to do things under someone else's agenda, do you think that if these people look back 10 years from now and feel like, oh, fuck, I fucked up, do you think they are redeemable people? Well, in my belief system, and I have just a belief system of my own self, I believe that I believe that you are always can be redeemable. You can always attempt to redeem yourself. For me, you can attempt to apologize to me, and in my belief system, I have to listen to you, but I don't have, have to accept it. But if someone offers me an olive branch and says, hey, I made bad, and I'm trying to make it good, I'll, I'm, I'll be like, I'm listening. But that does not mean I will accept, I will, uh, that does not mean I will accept it at that moment. Maybe a year later, I will have thought about it, and it takes some time, and I will go, okay, I'm cool, I accept your apology, but, so I think, uh, yes, I think you always can be redeemed. I think you can always redeem yourself. I, I think the power of the human being is uh, just amazing, amazing. I wish more people would see that and get out of the crab pot, of course. I think that's the bigger part. That's why we create. That's why artists create. I think a lot of it is to inspire others to use the, their powers. Power is self. It's not something you can climb. We've discussed this, right? So it's like, yeah. I, I think because we have this, this 
unharnessed power within us, most people unharnessed, I think they can redeem themselves, no matter the mistake. What do you think? I also think that um, it takes a it takes a it takes a very powerful sense of self to open that door and let someone prove themselves or let them not necessarily prove themselves. Sorry, but um, let let people try to redeem themselves, let people apologize, and then at least consider hearing them out. That's a big step for a lot of people, and I think that. That, in a way, is life. It's, it's quite noble. Nice. Nice. I like that. I, I, you know, for me, when you ask that question of redeeming, it's, it's when I think about it, it's a very personal question. It's almost like it's pointed to a me that, that um, five years ago, I started to try to redeem mm-hmm. myself. And my, for, for myself, though, not for you or others. But I didn't like the person I had become at 45 years old. I was like, what have I become? I'm an angry person. I've become isolated. You know, and I started to have to, you know, look at things differently. And, you know, in, in, in the occult and what I do, I toy with madness. I toy with these things. So when I saw things, when I saw that I had hurt enough people and done things that were very inconsiderate, I chose, to, I chose to try to be thoughtful about that and tell people, hey, I was thoughtless when I did that. I was young and thoughtless, and I apologize if I hurt your feelings. Or, yeah, you over there, I'm not sorry I hurt your feelings. I actually wanted to hurt your feelings more. <laughs> but uh, I, did, I did say things in my past that I wouldn't say I regret. It's hard for me to regret myself. But I would say that as an older person, I could see where I was wrong, you know, and if, if I wish I had the father of my older self, like say, hey, son, that's not the way you want to go. And also back then, it was like I was into being provocative, provocative artwork. So I was saying things that I didn't actually feel it was just to get attention, just to cause conversation or debate it was pre-internet. So it was easy for me to forgive myself but not easy for me to redeem myself with people who want to hold that stuff over my head. I can see that. But I'm, I'm a, constantly in a, an attempt at this moment to sort of redeem myself for the things I feel I've done that were wrong. And I, I, I would hope that everyone can do that. So when you ask that question, it's a heavy one, I guess. What have you heard from someone who was in that movie and they were like, Hey man, I heard what you said on that podcast and I just wanted to clear out my name. Would you hear them out? Um, well, certainly I would try to hear them out. I don't know if I could listen to all of it, but I would say, go ahead. I, you know, I mean, yeah, why not? I, I like to look, I yes. like to listen. I'm an interviewer. I'm curious, you know, certainly, I, I you know, certainly I would hear them out. If you have anything to say about this, if we horribly misjudged what you meant or something like that, you could actually contact us at questions at speakofthedevilpod.com or you can hit us up on speakofthedevilpod on Twitter as well or just directly to at Shane Bunky. All right, let's get into the movie. I went there with a friend that had helped set up the Radio Free Satan that we had when I was... I was given Radio Free Satan by the original creators of Radio Free Satan. They gave it to me because I did so well. And and a gentleman helped me set up the servers, and he went with me. And it was a it was interesting because they had two guards sit next to me. Mm-hmm. They followed they followed me around the theater. They knew I was there, and they they made them sit next to me. And the filmmaker was there. And I had originally planned to yell at the filmmaker and say something to her. But when the guards were next to me, and everyone, it seemed like, and then there was satanic temple, people started to converge around me. And I was like, oh, they're Are ready for this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, like, Did they, they sat... know who you were? It seemed that way. Someone got on their phone and texted something, and then they all moved over there. You know, and there uh. was a person, there was a person waiting at the door, and they were looking at everyone. And then when I came in, because your name's on the list, because I bought tickets, mm-hmm. um, they pointed out my name, and then the lady followed me in and sat right in front of me. And then she texted people and they came near 
So it was strange. It was definitely uh, ab abnormal. I thought they were, you know, I don't want to sound paranoid, but that's what happened. And it was abnormal. But I had been harassing the filmmaker ahead of time on Twitter, so I could understand. I wouldn't call accusing her of making a propaganda film harassing. She might call it that, but right, I, right. I think that you were just voicing your opinion and she didn't have her one-eyed boyfriend to protect her. Right, 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 right. So that, exactly. So I sort of felt like I, I do feel I did feel mis, misunderstood. That's for certain. I, I did not yell anything or ask her any questions afterwards. I thought I would wait and I thought I'd wait and do something like this or say it on Twitter when, when the time was right. I, I actually was trying to get paid by Vice or someone else to write a review of it. But I but I thought I would do it here. It would be interesting if you still ended up doing so with Vice, considering that would be almost like a full circle of, you know, Dougie News from Shane Bugby. I, I think I think you should yeah. still pursue this, especially after getting this one off your list. I, but, you know, I'm, I'm personally tickled and honored that you've, you've decided to come forward with this stuff and include me in this. So thank you very much. Uh, considering most, you know, to, to most in these circles, I am an obscure person. Uh, you probably don't know me, and I don't want to know you, most of you, but thank you very much for listening. <laughs> if you want to be my friend, and well, you think that we would be great friends, you can contact me at theofthedevilpod at gmail.com. Penny Lane, if you don't like the shade I throw at you, cash me outside. <laughs> Oh, I love this. Well, we, me and you, we became friends on a pod, you know, I did a podcast and you'd written me and I found you on Twitter and, you know, I, I'm nothing but happy being friends and working with you. I'm honored, actually. Do you know what? I heard so much shit about you when I first started reading your articles and um, finding out more about TST, things like that, post the Arkansas incident with the Baphomet. And the... I, I heard so much stuff about how you're a douchebag, how you, you're just a, you're just an asshole and stuff from people that I bet you, you have never met. And that's usually how it is. Yeah, yeah. Because it seemed like they either were taking someone else's word who got it from someone else who got it from someone else. And eventually, you know, who it points to who said it and yeah. Or they just read one article or saw one thing you did and they saw the picture of you and young Doug and you have the witch hat on, which is awesome by the way, and figured, just judged you based on an old photo of you. And that's what I'm hearing is a bunch of insecure people misjudged you because you are nothing like anything I was told about you. Well, that's generally the case is people have never met me or dealt with me call me this monster and I the best people are like um, and that could be a perspective based on what I put out so I leave those people alone but the best ones are he's a ripoff and I look into who's saying this and I'm like I've never had a deal with you how would you know if I'm a ripoff yeah. or not we've never had a dealing I've never met you we've never done any business uh, have I ripped people off yes have I made good yes on some people some people you know I've it's part of the, the nature of business. It's also the and whole, like, the great artist feel. Yeah. When they, when they were able to contact me directly, I, I'm just a dirtbag. I'm, I'm not held as a businessman or something else. It's 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 the uh, byproduct of too much access. That's why I don't give people access to me too much anymore. I was surprised that you even answered me back when you were doing your R.I.P. Shane uh, <laughs> podcast. To be honest, when I had, like, shot it out to you, I was expecting who are you or something like that and so that was that was really cool that that actually started out you know becoming friends with someone that i should have been friends with years ago i would have avoided so many people if i had become your friend yeah. oh that's that's great well it, it's the way that you approached me you know and and um and also alan the way he approached me wasn't a wasn't in in, in this weird uh sickle fit way or whatever it was uh it was just a, a kind word and a professional tone. And most people from that world don't have that. And, and it reminded me the way you approached me and Alan is of old COS people, old Church of Sa old Levian Church of Satan people. Um, and so that's what I miss. 
I actually miss that stuff. I, I miss the old, the old Church of Satan stuff. It was, it was really a cool group of artists, revolutionary artists, really good stuff, creators and and, and uh, innovators, trendsetters. Not they didn't follow. They fucking set the trends, man. Magicians. Yeah, real ones. Great stuff. Not just a dude in a cape. Right, no capes. No capes were allowed. So, um... Only LeVay got the... The, the Rick Scott material in, in coming back to the film, who was this original Lucian Greaves in it? Well, the original Lucian Greaves was me. Okay. I was the, fir I was the first person Doug asked to be Lucian Greaves. Mm -hmm. And I considered that for quite a while. Um, when it came down to it, because they were filming, because it was only for a fucking documentary, it wasn't for a religion or an actual church. It was for a, a parody group and, uh, and a, a parody kind of film. Mm -hmm. I agreed. I agreed to do it, but I wanted to be paid, and I wanted creative control over the edit. At some point, I wanted to be able to agree with edits, and they wouldn't allow me to. Uh, have any kind of control over the edit at the end, so I said no. Now, that's important to do when you're being filmed. Yes. Um, the magic is in the editing. I hate to inform people, but oh yeah, the magic. If you've ever heard my track where I sampled Doug saying, "Look at me, I'm an Aryan king to a dance beat," <laughs> this is perfect evidence that before you call and come at me with anything, I will sample you. And I will make an awesome track out of it. You will thank me. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. This is the best. You might be mad, but your ass is shaking. <laughs> well, so the Rick Scott footage, the, that, the, the Lucy and Greaves that you see there is an actor. They put an ad out. Everyone in the in that first film and the, the gravestone incident were actors. The girls kissing, the guys kissing, those were actors. Uh, the girls were not actually gay. They were just actors. So he had a hard time for time getting the men and the girls to kiss because they were not gay. They were actors. Wow. Wow. Right. Do you think people watching it knew this? Probably not, right? No, because the magic's in the attic. You know, they do it real quick, move it away. But that was an interesting, okay, so, the, yeah. so that was an interesting moment. When it was going down, I'm like, duh. Oh, this is so lame because this became Kevin's idea. We had the idea and it was supposed to be people fucking on the grave, okay? Like porn shit. Like we were going to have porn stars go there. And Kevin nixed, wow. yeah, Kevin nixed that and had actors. And I'm like, Doug, we're not going to be able to get publicity because that's, the tombstone is where we got the real publicity. The Rick Scott stuff had a, a blip of viral stuff, but it wasn't a big deal. No one, no one gave a shit about the satanic temple. It was just Satanism, Satanist, Satanist. They, the name of the group didn't matter. But when we did the tombstone incident, the, the God Hates Fags tombstone incident, this was where I was really working my magic. I'm like, Doug, there has to be sex on that fucking thing, or we're not going to get the attention. We're not going to get the attention. So he calls me, and he's like, they barely kissed. It was lame. And I'm like, Doug, there has to be something. There has to be something. I said, pull your fucking dick out and put it on that tombstone or something. So he put his balls on the tombstone because I don't think his dick was you know, full of blood at the time or something. So he, held, he covered up his dick and put his balls on the tombstone. You know, and, and so that's what got us the viral attention was the, the the desecration of grave. I wished it would have been porn stars, you know, fucking strap ons, you know, all this stuff, like going at it. Like that's what my my vision for that was porn on their stone. You know, showing them what fags do. Like God hates fags, it's okay. Let's show them what gay people do when they fuck, at least in porn. To what? To an entertainment standpoint um, and a sex sell star standpoint, I would imagine that just kissing on the grave is, that's girls gone wild, that's drunk girls at a club. Right, right. And it, it's not quite the punch that having sex on a grave would have had. No, I thought anal sex was really important. And I, you know, I thought anal sex and vaginal, 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 like scissoring, I thought showing some hardcore lesbian sex and hardcore gay sex was important. If we're going to mock the God hates fags people, let's show gay sex. The gay sex I'm used to seeing at the uh, Pride Parade in Chicago. Like, let's show some gay sex. But they didn't want to do that. And I hope that's not politically incorrect uh, in some sort of way. But 
I, 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 you know, that's just. So Doug just reenacted the scene from Step Brothers where he put his nuts out on the guys. Drunk. Yes. Yes. Okay. But I get people have sex that's just normal sex. You know, I get it, but. It's quite interesting, though, that um, no one tells this side of the story and how, you know, you hear old pop podcast from a couple years ago of uh, Doug talking about what he did and it, it's as if it was his idea and I'm sure it was presented that way because it makes for good publicity it makes for good PR for him but this is quite interesting that you're saying this Doug had to cut me out of that origin history I think I'm more I, I'm a more exciting person than him and Kevin put together I mean they, they really just book smart they haven't done much. You have yeah, they haven't done thunder. much with their lives. I mean, you could say the Satanic Temple's a big deal, but or they've done something. But I don't, I don't know. What else have they done? <laughs> what else? And like, if if your outcome didn't turn out, you know, what the expectation was, and so you got to call your dad to say, Dad, they didn't do it. What do I do now? You know, that's. That's quite different than I just thought about it and then pulled out my nutsack on the grave. Well, yeah, but I mean, he used me. They used me for their legitimacy up front. They used me to get attention of actual Satanist. And once I was done, that was uh, I was I was someone that was too, not not controllable. I was I was an uncontrollable element. They got rid of. Me. You mean you were an actual Satanist? Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I I had. I, I had expectations. <laughs> you wondered how it would benefit you. Well, yeah, or, or my goals in life, because a lot of my goals are are, uh, are a sacrificial almost to the left-hand path or the furtherment of humankind. So a lot of things I do and I keep doing, people might go, well, you're crazy. That has gotten you run out of town before. Why would you keep doing it? Because you're an artist. Yeah, I sort of dedicated myself to something and I want to see it through uh, until it totally breaks me. I'm willing to put myself out there and be totally broken by this because it's just what I, do, what, I, what I decided to do. And my goal is I would love to see in my lifetime the betterment of humankind, like the walls come crumbled down. And you sort of see that right now with religion. That's why I see like, what the fuck would you start a religion for, Doug? Like, it's dead. Religion is dying yeah, di or dead already. All you're doing is giving it a revival. Like the, the Christian. You're rebooting all the evangelicals also. Right, they need their zero one, zero one. They need the conflict. They need this to survive and you've given them something to survive. Why? Just watch them flounder and make fun of them. That's what we were supposed to do is make fun of them. Make fun of religion. Make. Do you think he's on a power trip? I think he is now. Absolutely, it's hard not to be. I've been there myself. It's these mistakes you make when you're younger and you see, you know, I've been there myself. I've been on power trips. And, and, um, and they're, they're quite fun, but the, the crash is heavy. <laughs> or the standards to keep up with that is something where you would, you would want to get a group of people to be a militant and, and uh, move people in a fear-based way. The power trips uh, end in war. And, and, you know, I, I don't like war. Do you like war? No. So power trips are for men like that, 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 that are caught up in the power trip. Napoleons. Hitler, Stalin. Yeah, all these people are caught up in a power trip and they need to keep it going. When they become irrelevant, their relevance is in fear and, and that kind of stuff and, and, and uh, war. Safety in numbers and controlling other people protects them. Right. So I, I'm just... I, I don't, that's not my trip. And, and I'm, I'm totally opposed to that kind of stuff. Why do you think that Malcolm Jerry covered his face? Well, because there's more in that mysticism than there is coming out. Uh, you know, you get you get more in that. I used to have a pen name called Michael Hunt Publish. I think Malcolm Jerry has riffed off of the stuff I've done to the point of a disgusting degree. Like if you just uh, compare things, it's like, oh, this guy doesn't do anything original. He, he's the typical school person where they they take underground stuff and, and uh, they they recreate it for themselves because they have an audience and the resources to get an audience. Street art, underground artists, we don't have those resources. 
But like I had, a, I had a pen name called Mike Hunt. I was Michael Hunt Publishing for a long time. And, and it built such a mystical thing in Chicago that I was getting cover stories. When I, when I decided to talk to someone, it was a big deal. They're like, you're Michael Hunt? <laughs> so there's a, there, there's a lot more there with that hidden factor, right? I see. The less, a, the less access an artist gives to people, it seems like the more important they become. If their artwork can hold, you know, if their artwork st stands the test and they're elu elusive, an, an elusive artist that it, is doing decent artwork can rise above. And I think that's what Malcolm Jerry does is he's just using, he's waiting to come out. That's what us talking about him is exactly what he wants. Every time we mention the Satanic Temple, they win. They, they want that. They don't care what you say. They don't care what we say. Do you think that he's also hiding who he really is? No, I think he's waiting to get what he wants. I think once he has a lobbyist group, Kevin uh, wants to work for the state. Department. Yeah, I was about to say, we all know who the fuck he is, even though it's still denied. We all know who it is. Right. He, he wants to work for the State Department. He wants a government job. That was his original Wikipedia. Go back and look, look at his Wikipedia stuff. Like he had a goal of working at the State Department or something like that. So um, he's, a, he's a government person and, and I don't know. I don't know if that's a bad thing, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, think, it wouldn't, I think if that's what his original goal was, that's probably his end goal right now. And so once once he obtains power or he, his end goal is met with the Satanic Temple, he'll use that as a part of his CV to join up and, and, and have power. He wants power. He has money. He's a rich New Yorker, old money, old money, a rich New Yorker. So he has money. He wants power. Now. That's his goal. Besides he and Doug, did you know anyone else personally who was in the movie? Huh. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't really know Kevin or Malcolm Jerry. I don't really, I met him a couple times and, and he's a he's a dim-witted rich kid. Uh, like I said, he wants power. He doesn't understand what power is. It's a, just an individual thing. And he, he doesn't have that. He has all the insecurities of a, of a person affect, affected by nepotism. What was your impression about these other uh, people who were interviewed in um, I felt sorry for most of them. I felt sorry for most of them, and I wouldn't want to hang out with them in a satanic perspective. I mean, if we're at a barbecue, they'd probably be really cool to talk to. If I'm at a Slayer concert or Juggalo, uh, the uh, Insane Clown Posse concert, I'd probably really enjoy rubbing elbows with them. But outside of that, whoop, whoop. Yeah, whoop, whoop, but whoop, whoop. But, but talking philosophy with them, I was like, oh, you guys couldn't handle that conversation with any Satanist that I know. You guys would be really sad to, you guys would be really sad. You'd get the party upset and sad and insecure if you came to a real Satanist party. You know, like, real Satanist. I think there's an entitlement to be accepted as a Satanist and be accepted by other Satanists that TST has sort of perpetuated. Oh, what does that mean? What do you mean an entitlement? Like, you're... What I mean by that is mostly interactions online. You have people introducing themselves as the Satanists, and then other people getting very angry at others who may call them out or don't like them. And there seems to be this weird safety in numbers now. Oh, Satanists. well, back when I was in the Church of Satan, you, I, mm -hmm. I was a representative of the Church of Satan, so I could talk about the Church of Satan officially mm -hmm. all the time. We were not allowed to, to debate Satanism online. That was the one, one of the rules, like, yeah, we don't talk about this stuff online. We'll talk about it to interviewers on the phone. We'll talk about it over the phone or in person, but we don't talk about it online. And, and maybe there's some reason to that when you, when you hear what, what the, the Satanic Temple people are doing. I don't like to equate the Satanic Temple with Satanism, though. I, I equate them with the political activist group, so maybe the entitlement is the same with Greenpeace, Interesting. or other, or, or of, uh, a, you know, an activist group like that. But I don't see too many people uh, outside of the Church of Satan talking about Satanism the way it should be spoken of, or the way it's the way it is. I don't see. I'm interested to see someone add to it. I just don't see it. Like it sort of sounds sometimes like it was instant gratification for people who were not patient enough to find their ill. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds right. Or like you were, uh, we were talking about this earlier. You were telling me about like how a lot of the people in the interviews sounded obliged to help. Oh, oh, that's a good one. I was so shocked when I heard that. Like they were like, I'm obligated. I felt obligated when I saw this. I felt obligated. I was like, what the fuck is that doing in a satanic movie? Obligated? Uh, no, no, they didn't say I felt obligated. They said we should feel obligated to help. We. Oh. Okay. It wasn't I. We. And I was like, who the fuck is we you're talking to, dude? Like, there's no. But also, aren't you not supposed to speak for other people? Well, that's true too. But when he's saying I feel obligated to help, that's a different thing than saying mm -hmm. we we feel obligated. I could feel obligated to help a group. That doesn't mean it's it's satanic. It just means it's my individual will or my my individual power. It, mm -hmm. I could feel obligated to help a Christian church feed homeless people as a satanist, but that doesn't make it satanic. <laughs> no, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to wear your best satan suit to do this either. Why are you doing this at that point if you're going to wear a costume to provide a noble action? Right. Right, exactly. I think that a lot of the volunteer work that a lot of people, perhaps people even in this movie, uh, do is very noble. Um, I hear about the area around me, uh, picking, tra picking up trash near the beach and stuff like that. That needs to be done and good on them for doing it. I think that's absolutely wonderful. But. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are being satanic by doing it. They just happen to have something in common and they're picking up trash on the beach. Right, but they shouldn't be muscling the rest of the people in the group to feel obligated. It becomes like some, some fucking chess club or a Christian group. Like, well, why weren't you at the beach helping us pick up? It's jockeying for position. It's all this weird shit. Like, oh, fuck. What if, fuck off, Joy. Mm -hmm. And then, like, those people who like they do the same thing and it almost seems like I'm sorry finish your thought I just forgot what I was about to say sorry well, I saw some of it and I was like you know you I just thought some of this I was like you middle-aged twat join the fucking PTA already and fuck off don't sit there and make it like it's a satanic thing to go out and, and do this stuff you know fuck you okay it's an it's an individual thing and that is it, it, it. okay Satanists can meet up, but it doesn't make it a satanic act. It's, just, it's there is no group satanic act. It's it's contrary to the whole philosophy. I I believe. Tell me I'm wrong, please. Tell me I'm wrong somehow. But that's the thing that bothers me the most is when we keep going. We're here to pick up trash on behalf of the satanic temple. Then think about the precedent you set. Then it could be yes. we're here as this satanic group to move you Muslims the fuck out of town. We're here as a satanic group to keep this border secure. We're here as a satanic group to make sure that wall gets built around the Mexicans. We're here as a satanic group to make sure those homeless people don't get fed, okay? That's what ha happens. That's the precedent you're setting by. We're here as a satanic group to pick up trash. Well, fuck you. But also, We're you, not here as a satanic also those people are also assuming everyone's on the same political standpoint. Well, that's what I'm saying. saying. That. Well, maybe that group is. Those group of friends that met through Satanism are on the same beach. They love it. They're like, hey, let's meet up. You know what you are? You're a group of friends meeting to pick up trash who happen to share a philosophy that you probably don't share all of the aspects of your, you know, the interpretation. If there's five people that are picking up trash, there's probably five different interpretations of the philosophy that you guys ride under. Because you're not Christians, right? Because it's a self-interpretation. Not totally self, because you have a good guide with the Satanic Bible and LeVay's, LeVay's generosity and others' generosity helping you explain what, the, what some of this stuff is. But it's an individual, you know, thing. It's, it's, it's impossible to meet as a satanic group to pick up trash. It's only possible to meet as a group of friends who met through a philosophy to pick up trash. But when they put this star out in front of it to make it a friendly thing, I don't want my Satanism friendly, you fucking assholes. I don't, I don't want it accepted by society. The society sucks. The society at large is what's killing off the planet. And we have, we have 12 years for 
to help out with the global warming, stuff like that. I don't want to be friendly to them, okay? I want to be able to wear my baphomet and have them fear me if I put it on. I want other children and other children. I'm a perpetual child. But uh, I want other Satanists that are in Iowa to be able to wear a baphomet, people to fear them, not going, hey, maybe they'll come up over to the PTA and help us pick up trash. They're friendly Satanists. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? What about, that makes me you know think of it, all the baby Baphomet images yeah. and stuff that are in now. The very cute Muppet baby version of Satanism that has become a very new phenomenon. Right, well you have wolves and you have dogs. It makes them dogs, poodles, little poodles. Baby Baphomets, right, they're little poodles. They're not, they're not the wolves that they pretend to be. And wolves are a very noble, creature you know they, they use it they, they hold them as some murderous beast but i don't I, i'm just saying like they're just a tamed animal and i like to think that uh, satanists are, are a reasoned animal but not tame it's not a hunt it's not a flock right it's a pack and yes the word hierarchy is very important it's not in the sense of a national council with a bunch of president, you know, student body presidents all over the place. It's in the sense that we aren't all equal people and to get to the top, you gotta do you to get to the top. It has nothing to do with what other people are doing. So pulling people back into a crab pot and being like, hey, you're too uppity, you gotta do this for all of us. Or suddenly, you know, wanting to put a group's name onto your project or your art because it's for the greater good of the group. That's that's not satanic either. That's that's a fucking cult. That's what I see a lot when you talk about them pushing people, members out of this, the Temple of Satan or even myself, like ignoring me in the documentary. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I think that that's what they do. They ignore the people with real talent or real accomplishment, real world, real world stuff. Definitely. And, and to make themselves look bigger than what they actually are. You know, I would debate Doug any day of the week. Like, I would love to debate him publicly, live and public. Doug, if you would like to debate Shane, you can contact us at SatanTheDevilPod at gmail.com. I encourage oh. you to bring, to bring uh, Kevin and Jex Blackboard. All The three of you could stand on one side of the stage and debate me. Now mentioning Jex, a lot of people have been under the impression since she wrote her manifesto on Medium that she is against TST and on her own. Do you think that? I know she, she absolutely them? works with them. They meet in Detroit all the time. Doug and her meet in Detroit all the time, secretly. Um, and that you could see that in the film very clearly. She would not be in the film if she was a threat. And she would not be, let's say, performing at Sundance Film Festival saying how she's an enemy. She serves the point, the, the purpose of uh, a, she wants to have an individual career and, um, mm -hmm. but she serves the purpose of having all the defectors or traitors come to her and talk shit about Doug. Anyone who's not satisfied with Doug may talk to her and she can go and report back. That's, it's, it's like a common thing in cults to have a uh, a person on the out, outside, a mole, yes, that's what she serves. And it's obvious to anyone who's a skeptic or paying attention, it's it's real obvious. I mean, I don't, I don't like her jive because it just seems like she lifts off of everything. It looks like right now she's doing an act from Stephen Leba with her sex thing. That's a Stephen Leba act. The, uh, I'm gonna hurt the, uh, I don't wanna say anything like that, what she said in the film. But that comes that comes from an old radio show we did called Radio Jihad. The whole the script that she used in the film was a something I described in a radio show, like when I called the Secret Service. Just a different dynasty you were talking about. Well, yeah, yeah. I was. Well, I'll just say what I said. I called the Secret Service and I asked him. And, and Doug was on the radio with me. We're doing the show, and I called the Secret Service and said, "Hey, if I was doing performance art and I just said uh, I want to kill the president." Is that illegal? And he said, just uttering those words will get you investigated. I'm like, hey, dude, I didn't utter the words. I'm asking a question. That's it. Can you answer the question? He said, I will have to call you back. And he called back, and he never gave a straight answer except to give us the code. You can read the code here. And I'm like, but you're not really answering the question. So that means I could do a performance skit where I just shout that out, and nothing's really going to happen to me because of free speech, right? 
and he wouldn't say I was right, but I knew I was. And we, but that's in the film, and I was like, wow, that's right from our radio show 20 years ago. Wow, this is this is a scripted film, and Jex is following along with the script. Since they're friends, I'm sure that Doug told her about stuff you guys used to do, and she just did it. Well, Doug was an old Detroit person, and she's in Detroit. I believe she actually called into that show, and she was the one that's trying to make Doug gay. You're trying to make Doug gay. And I was like, what? She goes, yeah. She, she said, I was gay, and I was trying to make Doug gay. And I was like, what the fuck? Why? And, and well, why? Because back then, it's like even today, if you say, like I said, me and Doug had a love between each other. Some people are triggered to think that means homosexual love. And maybe it did somewhere deep down inside us, but I don't I don't recognize that. I see it as just a love of a friend, you know? And so I think people misunderstand that stuff, even to this day, that are a little closeted or repressed sexually. I think it's ironic that she's doing a sex thing, having probably never been a sex worker. Probably never. Yeah, she speaks for a lot of people that she is not. And right. all I've seen is a white girl on a motorcycle. And that's what I don't get with this group is like how tone deaf they are. It's like now. Jax, cash me outside. Yeah, cash her outside, motherfucker. How about that? How about it? But I'm saying all these people speak like it's at this point in the world. You'd like, oh, if I'm gonna, I want to do, a, I want to promote a sex group, a positive political sex group. You're gonna get sex workers involved with you at the very least, hardcore sex workers. But if you want to encourage that and you want to help them, that's cool, and you should yes. should be uplifting anyone in the margins right now. And yes. and you know like. If, if you know someone that's in the margins, you should be helping them out right now, or you should be collab collaborating. That's what we should be doing in the face of uh, the Trumpian logic. Yes, but and I think she's out for herself, and she just wants to be famous. It is, and, and you know, then you go back to the satanic thing, we're out for ourselves, but are we tone deaf? Are we that ignorant that we're gonna be out for ourselves for just this moment, and not recognize in five years, people are gonna call you on that and go, man, you're not even a sex worker, fuck you. Like, how do you climb out of this one? And it's the same with, with the, that, that, the, the, the satanic temple and them not having people of color in their council and all this controversy I heard breaking loose with them. I thought it was an easy fix. Like, yeah, just start re say you're sorry. Yeah. Move, a, move, a, move ahead to what people are talking about because it's, it's the sign of the times. What people are saying is the truth. Like, there should be more people of color involved. You should be out there fixing this problem and not ignoring it. Not to mention that trans people and people of color are the are today's adversary half the time. Oh, they're the hipsters of the moment, absolutely. Especially the trans group. Mm -hmm. I, I, I see that uh, so much. Like, they're at the front lines of abuse right now. Front lines. Yes. Um. What did you think of, so there's no, were you under the impression there's no people of color in the National Council? Um, I was when there was some breakup. I, I have very little to do or understand about the Satanic Temple okay. of today. I heard that there was a big spill, uh, like a lot of people quit because they they, they took on a, a lawyer that represents white supremacists or Al, yes. Alex yes. Jones. And Mark Rendanza. Right, and I could see, like, that's tone deaf. Immediately when someone says, hey, dude, that's fucked up, you should have said, yeah, I guess it is. I wasn't thinking. Um, let's yeah, even if you didn't intend for it to be so, you need to re reevaluate that. Right, not be so stubborn to go fuck at what everyone's saying. I'm going to do it my way. And those days are over. you got to listen to the, the collective, especially when you are a collective. You're not a, you know, or you're just a dictatorish kind of person. We're coming close to the end of our time, but um, I had, I just wanted to know some final thoughts, I guess, about this movie, and regardless of it obviously rubbing you the wrong way, would you recommend it to other people, and why? Oh, no, I would not, because it's just boring. My friend that came with me, and he has a, like I said, he helped start, he helped with Radio Free Satan. He was the first person to help publish Doug, so he knows everything Doug would talk about then. He fell asleep in the movie. <laughs> He's like a... 
Yeah, he, he's a person that's actually interested in Satanism and he defends the Satanic Temple to me often. Like when I argue, he's a skeptic. So he'll be like, well, I don't know. Maybe what you're saying is a little hard. You know, he doesn't agree with me across the board. And then sometimes he does later on. So he's a good friend. My final question to you, and then I'm going to call it is, do you think that Penny Lane was appointed for this documentary to basically be a patsy for them? Like, do you think that, what I mean is, do you think that she's the fall girl so they don't have to take ownership for this documentary? Oh shit. Anyone who's not an owner of the Satanic Temple name is a fall person. Every member, every single person will fall or, or is a person they're willing to push off a bridge just by corporate law. They're a corporation, like an Ivy League corporation. So yes, the answer is that. I think Penny Lang shows such a personal love and attraction for it. I wouldn't doubt that she's had uh, been intimate with Doug or, you know, I, I wouldn't doubt they have a very intimate relationship. But I, I know that, that, or she's a member of the, this Temple of Satan somehow. But it, it's obvious that she was paid or they paid for the film. They invested in it and she made it. It's, it's pretty obvious. Penny, when your heart gets broken by Doug, call us up. Let's talk. You can sit at our table. We'll be your friend. Yeah. It'll cost you your soul. <laughs> I think she already sold it. I think like, I, I think like, it's like the Hitler filmmaker, you know what I mean? What yeah. happens when this stuff goes bad? What happens when when, when, when it's, it, it is used to control people to, you know, we're a group of Satanists and we're going to build that wall. We're going to intern, we're going to run this internment camp or whatever. It's, yuck. I'm very sorry you had to waste your time but I sincerely thank you for saving me the time that I would have wasted seeing this piece of garbage. I was obligated. <laughs> <laughs> I was obligated to see it, I really was. All right, well, you're a real mensch for doing this. Thank you, and have a good oh, one. All right, I like being a mensch. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and tune into our next episode wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. You can find us at Speak of the Devil Pod on Twitter and contact us at speakofthedevilpod at gmail.com. For Shane's artwork or to support his endeavors, please visit shanebugby.com or find him on Twitter at shanebugby. I've been Nanarol. Have a good one. Oh, and she is the devil.com.